And so now we need to go ahead and explore evaluating vector surface integrals. So to begin, I want you to keep in mind how we evaluated vector line integrals. So we have the vector line integral over our curve C is defined as the vector field dotted with the normal vector, and we integrate here with respect to the arc length. We then went through and we converted this to the parameterized line integral in terms of our single parameter t. So now what we need to do is extend this into three dimensions. So we're going to look at two cases again here. We have vector surface integrals that are where the surface is defined parametrically, as we just saw with the scalar surface integrals, and then we also are going to need to consider the case where the surface may be defined explicitly. Again, just like we saw with scalar surface integrals. So here we go. Let's look at the parametrically defined surfaces first. So in both cases, we begin by letting our vector field here in R3 defined by components F, G, H be a continuous vector field in space containing a smooth oriented surface S. So it's important to keep in mind here that with our vector surface integrals, our surface must be oriented, just like with vector line integrals. So hopefully you're starting to see those parallels. So here we go. What if our surface is defined parametrically? Well, if our surface is defined parametrically, this means that we can redefine S as the vector valued function R in terms of U and V, where we have the parametric description of x in terms of uv, the parametric description of y in terms of uv, and the parametric description of z in terms of uv. And this, of course, is such that the ordered pair uv is an element of that two-dimensional region r in the plane. So this is such that r is in r2, or in the plane. So then we can define the surface integral, the vector surface integral, over this parametrically defined surface as follows. And again, we're going to be drawing those parallels between vector line integrals and surface line integrals here. So to start, we have the double integral over the parametrically defined surface S, and this is going to be of the vector field dotted with the normal vector, just like that vector line integral, and we integrate with respect to the surface. So, of course, we know that we have parameters here, u and v, so we're going to need to rewrite this vector surface integral as follows. So this becomes the double integral over that region r in the plane of the parametrized vector field, so this becomes the vector field of the parametric representation r of u v, which we'll rewrite momentarily, and we're still dotting this with our normal vector. So our normal vector, we know already from scalar surface integrals, is defined as the cross product of the tangent vector in the u direction crossed with the tangent vector in the v direction, and this will be dA. So we can alternatively write this, if we parameterize that vector field, we can rewrite this as the double integral over that two-dimensional region r of the parameterized vector field. So that's going to be x of uv, y of uv, z of uv, and we're dotting this with the normal vector, which we define as the cross product of the tangent vector in the u direction with the tangent vector in the, d, in the v direction, multiplied by our area differential. And this is, of course, where we already know that the tangent vector in the u direction is simply the partial derivative of the parameterization with respect to u. So we can think of this in vector components as the partial derivative of x with respect to u, the partial derivative of y with respect to u, and the partial derivative of z with respect to u. We also have the tangent vector in the v direction, which is defined as the derivative of the parameterization vector r with respect to v. And so this has components, partial derivative of x with respect to v, the partial derivative of y with respect to v, and the partial derivative of z with respect to v. 
And by our knowledge of the cross product, if these two vectors, t sub u and t sub v, are tangent to the surface, so they are parallel to our surface, then the cross product of them defines a vector normal to the surface. So you can say that vector n is defined as the cross product of these two tangent vectors. And this is, of course, where, just as before, we know that n, or vector n, excuse me, cannot be equal to zero. It's a non-zero normal vector. And we also want to note from vector line integrals that our normal vector needs to have an orientation consistent with the surface. So you have an orientation. And let's give ourselves a little bit more room here. So our orientation is consistent with the surface. So one last love note before we look at our second case here is that changing the orientation simply implies changing the sign of the result. So we want to make a note before we continue that changing orientation simply implies changing the value. Changing the value meaning changing from positive to negative or vice versa. So this is our surface integral for a parametrically defined surface, the vector surface integral. And so now we need to think about when our surfaces are defined explicitly. So again, we begin by letting vector field F be a continuous vector field on some region in space containing a smooth oriented curve, or excuse me, a smooth oriented surface, S. So we want to think, okay, well, what if this smooth oriented surface is defined explicitly? So if our surface is defined explicitly, that means we're given the surface in the form Z is equal to G of X, Y. And this is such that X, Y is an element of some region R where R is in the plane, or in R2. So then using this, we can parametrize our surface using a vector valued function R of X, Y. And this is such that we have components X, Y, Z, but we're going to replace this Z with G of X, Y. So we have the vector X, Y, G of X, Y. So then, using this now explicitly defined surface, we have the vector surface integral over our surface S of the vector field dotted with that normal vector, again, just like vector line integrals, and we integrate with respect to the surface. So we can now parametrize this and say that this is equivalent to the double integral over that two-dimensional region R of the parametrized vector field so that's vector f parametrized by the parametric representation vector r of x, y. And again, we're dotting this with the normal vector. So that's going to be defined as the cross product of the tangent vector in the normal directed, uh, in the x direction crossed with the tangent vector in the y direction, dA. So again, let's think about where these components are coming from. So this is where we have the tangent vector in the x direction, which is defined as the partial derivative of vector r with respect to x. And so using our parametrized surface, we can see that this vector, this tangent vector, has components the partial derivative of x with respect to x, the partial derivative of y with respect to x, and then the partial derivative of the function g with respect to x of x, y. And we can simplify this. We know, of course, that the partial derivative of x with respect to x is 1. The partial derivative of y with respect to x is 0. And then we can rewrite the partial derivative of the function g with respect to x as simply 
the partial derivative of z with respect to x. And we'll do the same thing now with the tangent vector with respect to y, or in the y direction. So this is the partial derivative of vector r with respect to y. So we have the partial derivative of x with respect to y, the partial derivative of y with respect to y, and the partial derivative of function g with respect to y. And just as we did before, we can simplify this. This is the vector 0, 1, and the partial derivative of z with respect to y. And again, using our knowledge of the cross product, if these two tangent vectors are parallel to the surface, then a normal vector can be def a vector normal to the surface can be defined by their cross product. So we have vector n is defined as the cross product of the tangent vector in the x direction with the tangent vector in the y direction. And computing this cross product with these two vectors above, we are left with 0 minus the partial derivative of z with respect to x, i hat, minus the partial derivative of z with respect to y, minus 0, j hat, plus 1 minus 0, k hat. And so we are left with components defined as minus the partial derivative of z with respect to x. And let's give ourselves more room here minus the partial derivative of z with respect to x, minus the partial derivative of z with respect to y, and 1. So, while we have this initial representation for our vector surface integral here, we now want to go ahead and rewrite this using the normal vector that we just found. So an alternative notation for this surface integral that we'll use in computation is as follows. So here is our alternative notation, again, important to computation. So this is the surface integral, that double surface integral over the surface S of the vector field F dotted with the normal vector integrated with respect to the surface area. And we rewrite this now as the double integral over that two-dimensional region R in the plane and I'm going to rewrite the vector field in terms of its components, f, g, h, which of course are all parametrized in terms of x and y, just as we did above. And now we're going to dot this with the normal vector that we just found. So the components of that were minus the partial derivative of z with respect to x, minus the partial derivative of z with respect to y, 1, d, a. And so let's go ahead, we can even expand this one step further, computing the dot product here. So this leaves us with that double integral over that region R in the plane of minus F, so minus F multiplied by the partial derivative of Z with respect to X minus G multiplied by the partial derivative of Z with respect to Y plus h d a. And so this is the form that we're going to use most often in computation. 